Check one, two. Deep Ellum on air. Deep Ellum on air. It's time to really get our party on now. HireHero.org presents PMS, the Pugs Moran Show, for a Tuesday afternoon. Bit of a late start today, April 2nd. No more uh, April Fools. Did you get? Did you fall for any April Fools jokes yesterday, Jansen? No, no, but I, cr- I caused one. Did you? Yeah. Well, I, what was the... I, uh, I acted like I dropped Catherine's phone in the toilet. Oh! And she freaked. Catherine, your girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. She freaked out, man. That's a big one. Yeah, I got a little wet on the on the back where it was safe and just came with it like dripping. <laughs> and I was like, I'm so sorry. I was trying to like type a message in there and it slipped out of my hand and she started freaking out. <laughs> no, when she freaks out, does she yell at you? No, she she Or kinda, she just gets sad. She, yeah, she shuts down, like her her eyes get all big and you know. Yeah. She just kinda all right, well, uh I had uh no we didn't know that. I guess the big fool was that we didn't do a show yesterday. Oh, all right, let's put my co-host up for today. Sure, I'll my cord up. Okay, hi, Mason. This is my three-and-a-half-year-old son, Mason. He's co-hosting PMS with me today. Well, I shouldn't say co-hosting. He's going to be popping in and out throughout the show. Sure, he want to be a pop. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, there is, there is something that uh, Mason did. Mason saw last night, and we'll get to a regular... You know what? Uh, I'll get to your list of things you wanted to hear discussed that you pasted, uh, posted up on Facebook. We do that before every show. If you join my Facebook page, John Pugs, I'll uh, put up a thing every day before the show that says, "What do you guys want to talk about?" And then just throw up some stuff. The tie. Hey, you don't talk over. You got to teach you proper mic technique. You got to wait till I'm done talking, and then when I'm making eye contact with you, then you can start talking. No. But right now, you're not the host. <laughs> you're the sidekick, so you have to defer to me. I can't do that. No, I didn't think that you could. <laughs> hey, Jansen, you know what Mason Mason saw a movie last night. So, yeah. I, so I thought maybe we would do a little film review segment. Cool. All what, right. What was the movie, Mason? Mason, would you like to tell everybody what movie you watched last night? So. What movie did you watch? Jaws. <laughs> Jaws? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. What was Jaws about? Jaws about biting people. <laughs> yes, it was about biting people. Mm-hmm. And what else? Well, who, tell me about Jaws. Who is Jaws? Jaws is a shark. Yeah, yeah. And, and what is a shark? He bites people every time. But every time, yeah. That's pretty much what Jaws' whole deal was. But he learned about sharks yesterday. He didn't know what sharks were. He knew what dolphins were. But he was up late because he took a late nap. And uh, we were up past 10 o'clock. And Jaws was on one of the cable channels, and I was watching it, and he came walking out, and he's like, can I lay on the couch with you? And I'm like, ugh, I'm really kind of 40, I'm already 45 minutes into this movie. You know, I don't want to stop watching it. It's no, just... stop watching it. No. Okay, all right. So then you came out, and you joined me, and um, we did a lot of cover your eyes for a lot of the more gory scenes. No, it wasn't that. What it was... wasn't? Turn around, turn the sound up. Oh, so you want more sound in your ears. Okay, well, that's not something that we discuss on the air. That's all for off the air. You have to, give, you have to figure out a, a hand signal routine with Jansen, and then he'll turn your microphone up. But you don't have to say that on the air. That's all for off the air. I can't do that. No, you can't. I know. You have no difference. I can't. I can't. Okay, so all in all, uh, a thumbs up or thumbs down for Jaws? What did you think? Did you like it? I thought Thumbs up. Thumbs up for Jaws. All right, there you go. There's right. the first Was it a little scary? Right. Did you get a little scared? No, mm. not really. Oh, you're brave. No, he wasn't scared. And it was really crazy because there's a scene, uh, if you're familiar with the movie Jaws, about halfway through the movie, just as Jaws really gets rolling with his destruction of people, it's uh, like Fourth of July weekend on this beach community, Amityville, which is where Amityville, New York, is where this takes place. Or maybe it's Massachusetts. I... Wait, I know that there is a real Amityville, New York, and that's where the Amityville horror took place. But I believe this is like some fictional Cape Cod Island, also called Amityville, mm. where Jaws takes place. It's for the July weekend, and, and the mayor of the town is upset. No, I, I, I didn't say that, but it's like, it's like a dolphin. 
Yes, a shark is like a dolphin. But what's the difference between a shark and a dolphin? A shark bites people. Yes, it does. All right, and a dolphin helps people, right? Yeah. Yeah, dolphins are your friend. No, 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 wait. I, I want to say that. You want to say what? I just didn't say that. Okay, well, let me talk now, okay? No, I didn't say it. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we're at the scene where the shark is, is just starting to attack all the people at 4th of July weekend, the big weekend celebration, the big commercial weekend for this island resort community. They need to make their money this weekend, you know, because that's how they do. They make their money on the resort. But nobody wants to go into water because a couple of days earlier, a shark had eaten someone. So the mayor's trying to get everybody to go into water. So finally, everybody does go in the water. And that's the scene where we, we hear the doo-doo. Do, 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 do. And we see the shark fin coming through the water and it's going after Jansen, he wasn't scared. Wow. He was completely hypnotized. He was sitting up. He was happy. He was totally asleep when he came out on the couch. But he was now sitting up in his little pajamas and his eyes were as wide as saucers. And he was just he was just staring at the TV. <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> yeah, it means a shark is coming. All right, buddy. Well, thank you. I appreciate that film review for uh, the one or two of you out there who have never seen Jaws. <laughs> wow, is it? Would you recommend seeing Jaws? Sure. All right. Uh, oh, in closing, before you head back out to finish your lunch and watch the Aquabats, you want to say anything about Easter? How did the Easter Bunny treat you? Oh, so good. Yeah, the Easter Bunny treated you pretty good. What'd you get? I got. Candy. Uh huh. And I got some sweets and and I got. Did you get any toys? Oh yeah. Yeah. What'd you get? I got a. I got goggles, floaties. Yeah, you did. Did you get any crayons? No, I just ate them. Did you get crayons? Mm -hmm. And what'd you do with them? I just broke them. You broke them. Yeah. But before you broke them, what did you do with the crayons? I wrote on the wall. Yeah, you wrote on the wall. Yeah, with crayons. Good thing that I have crayon remover and I can get that off. But did you get in trouble for writing on your wall? He got, I should tell you, he got in trouble. He ended up, oh, I don't want to go into this. But he ended up going over my head to my mother. He figured out how to reach my mother on Skype. My mom was on Skype. That's awesome. <laughs> so he got in trouble for writing on the walls. I gave him a quick little paddle on the butt, sent him to his room and said, you stay in your bedroom and you think about that while I try to figure out how to clean up the wall. While I was in, while I was in the other room and he was sentenced in his bedroom, his grandma, he contacted his grandma on Skype back in Chicago. And I hear this. I hear him talking to someone in his room. And I just kind of blow it off. I'm like, okay, he's blowing off steam. Then a couple of seconds later, he comes out. He goes, um, grandma wants to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> it was the craziest thing. He's three and a half years old. He can already operate. I mean, it's unbelievable what he's going to be able That's to do wild. when he's 10 years old. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. It's pretty unbelievable. It is. Okay. Why don't we play a song here? Let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll answer a couple of uh, the Facebook requests. Snack. And I'm going to go get him set up with his snack, and uh, we'll do that. We'll come back with uh, segment two here on today's PMS, hireahero.org, helping transitioning veterans from the Afghan and Iraqi war. Hireahero.org brings you this show each and every day, and we're very proud to be partners with them. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with more of PMS on DeepElemOnAir.com.
PirateHero.org presents PMS The Pugs Moran Show for Tuesday afternoon, segment two, up and running. Hi, Jedi, how are you? I'm good. Check me out on Facebook, John Pugs, where each and every day I will incite you in ways, provoke you in others. Uh, but mostly I just want you to put up things that you'd like us to talk about. So in the first segment, we can go over some of these things. And we've got a bunch of things to go. Boy, since the streamathon that we did this weekend, I was completely out of the loop as far as news and all of that. So we got a lot to get caught up on here. First of all, off the Facebook page, Michael Welsh wants me to know Kevin Ware leg injury. He wants to know about the Kevin Ware leg injury. Hey, I love Michael Welsh, by the way, man. He's a big supporter of yeah. everything we do. Good dude. Shout out to him. All right. And should college athletes get paid to play? All right, quickly, uh, are you aware of, uh, do you know what the Kevin Ware leg injury is? I, I saw some, uh, you know, some people, yeah, a little bit. Have you seen it? No, I, I haven't. I refuse to look at it. I refuse to look at it. I, I was a child back when the, the previous most grotesque sporting injury took place, and that was the Joe Theismann leg break on Monday Night Football. What, Mason? You're still here? Okay, I'm going to need you to go into the other room because Daddy's going to talk to adults, okay? All right, if you want to sit there and listen, you want to sit and listen to what Daddy says? Okay, but then you got to be quiet, and Jedi's going to turn your microphone off, okay? All right. Well, see, right now you're already proven that you can't be allowed in here. Do you want to be in here or do you want to go in the other room and watch your shows and eat your lunch? Well, I didn't uh, all right. Well, I'm just going to continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that funny? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to ignore you. You can put him no. down low, actually. Let him just be a dis... Because I, I will show you how well no, a parent learns to tune distractions out when they have a kid. All right. So Kevin Ware plays for Louisville. And uh, in the uh, Elite Eight over the weekend, he he fell funny. It, it actually didn't even look that bad. Did you did you see at all how the injury occurred? What's his name? I'm going to pull the video up real fast. Kevin Ware. Now, most video sites, and even CBS, because CBS aired it live when it was happening, he is, you know, they, they show the injury over and over in the replay. And in the case of Kevin Ware, they almost immediately, immediately went to blurring it. You know, obscuring it so you can't actually... That's how bad the injury was. I have no... In, I, oh. I have no... Did you see it? Is it blurred or is it unblurred? I will not look at the unblurred, and even the blurred version of his injury just skeeves me out to no end. I mean, I saw an animation on CNN with Dr. Sanjay Gupta on how the leg broke, and oh my God, it's like the most violent leg break I've ever seen in my life. It completely fractured in half and broke through the skin. I mean, he fell on this leg in the most barbaric and violent way. And it was a freak accident. Just a total freak accident. It was so bad. I mean, you knew it was bad when the camera swung over to the other Louisville players and players on the other team. And even the players couldn't watch. The other players all had their hands buried in their heads. And they were just shaking their head. They're like, oh my God. That was like grisly as but here we are two days later he's uh gonna have surgery he was up on crutches yesterday he's getting ready to travel with the team because the team does, did move on so they'll be in the final four he's gonna travel with them this weekend to atlanta but it's, and they actually think that you know it was such a massive break that it's so clean it's not a nuanced break at all that it should heal completely and he'll be fine and he'll be able to play it was so devastating that it could only heal a hundred percent. It's not like there are things that are broken and things that aren't. You know, a lot of times... Yeah, it's with, not like a fractured it, or anything. It's not like he's going to have... It's, he, they think that he can play again. Well, they're not saying that yet, but they think that it's such a clean break that he should be all right, just <sighs> less serious than an ACL is what they said. But oh my God. All right, so the second question. Oh, God, I know. I it, was it blurred? It. No. Oh, see, I can't, I can't look at that. I have no interest in seeing that. Oof. The leg completely snapped in half oh. while he was coming. Oh, <laughs> turn it off, man. How can you even? I can't even have that in my periphery. Oh, do you know? And thumbs up to this dude, though. Did you see him on the ground? Now, the good Lord, if you choose to believe, uh, I think it's just the body's way of shutting down. But they have given us this amazing little painkiller called shock. Have you ever been in shock? Yeah, when I got stabbed. 
Okay, you didn't feel it, did you? Yeah, no. You had no idea you were stabbed. It could have been a knife stuck halfway in your. You wouldn't know it because something magical about the body when you when you receive so much pain, the body just flips a, a switch and goes, no, no more pain. You're not gonna feel anything now. Uh, yes, Mason, my son. Oh, you're gonna go potty? Do you know where the potty is? Go make sure he went in the right room. Okay, I'm sorry. Make sure he's running. I would hate to have him just kind of pee in a closet or something because he thinks that's where it is. Ah. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, the last time that well, I remember one of these things, the worst injuries, I'm trying to think about the worst injuries are that I've seen. Joe Theismann on Monday Night Football with the compound fracture of his leg that I believe essentially ended his career. That was gruesome. There was another guy in a Super Bowl who played for the Bengals called Tim Crumry who, like, on the first play of the Super Bowl, broke his ankle. He was a, a nose guard, nose tackle. And maybe he was a middle linebacker, but, but I believe he, he played on the nose. Um, his, his ankle was snapped so badly that in the replay, it was flailing around like a flag in the wind. Uh. As he went tumbling over, his ankle was just, there was nothing. I think it was his Achilles tendon that snapped or something, but nothing was holding the ankle there. It was just like a bone in a sock, and it was just like flopping around. Oh, it was the most disgusting thing. And then uh, this one, this Kevin Ware kid. I'm sure there have been others, but, but those are like the three that I, I, I will always remember now. Yeah, AskMen.com actually has a top 10 uh, gruesome sports injuries. Oh, God, give them to me. Okay, run them down for right, me. So we got, uh, let's see. So number 10 is John Terry during the Carling Cup. Yeah, that, Chelsea uh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, Come Arsenal. on, come on. We're in America. We don't, we don't need soccer injuries. What else we got? Number nine is Dave Dr Dravicki. Oh, my God, I forgot about Dave Dravicki. Oh, Dravicki, yeah, Dravecki. The, the tumor. Oh my God! I forgot about that one. You know what? That's up there. That's I, I. That is right there with Joe Theismann and Tim Crumry and now Kevin Ware. Dave Dravecki was on the mound pitching, and he literally threw his arm out of the socket. Uh. His whole arm came out while on the mound, and he just crumpled forward in pain. Holy crap, I forgot about Dave Dravecki. He was a San Francisco um, uh, giant at the time. And Jansen, he just went like this. He, he threw so hard that his arm just completely popped out. And like he, he went forward with the ball and like tumbled in front of the mount. Oh, it was disgusting. It was disgusting. His arm wow. gave out. His arm wow. totally gave out. All right, what else do we have? So number eight, Sid Vicious. Sid Vicious? Yeah, apparently uh, he was doing some stuff for WCW. Sid? No. Not yeah. Sid Vicious from the Sex Sid, Pistols. Sid, Sid Vicious, the punk rocker of the wrestling circuit. Oh, yeah, okay. So it's not the Sid Vicious okay, from yeah, the yeah, Sex yeah, Pistols. Yeah, yeah. He died long before the WCW was even formed. So apparently he jumped off the top of the turnbuckle and came down feet first. Yeah, wrestling. I don't care about wrestling. What else we got? So we got uh, number seven is Tyrone Prothro. Okay, why do I wide, know that Wide name? receiver known for two things. An incredible Hail Mary, Hail Mary catch and a freakish injury. Before breaking both bones in his lower legs. Um, yeah, I don't know. Next one. I don't remember that one. <laughs> Joe, the Joe Theismann is number six. Joe Theismann is bad. And then the Tim Crumry has got to be in there. All right, number five, Napoleon McCollum. McCallum. Mc McCallum. Oh, yeah, the knee injury. He's a running back. We're just ignoring the kid. I hope you can ignore the kid as well as uh, I am. I'm a tra trained father of three and a half years. Uh, number four is Sean Livingston. Sean Livingston. With the uh, it was the NBA. Livingston is let's see. Basically. Nah, it doesn't matter. I don't know who he is. Okay. Sounds like almost the same injury as uh, the other guy that, uh -huh. that we were just talking about. Number three is Willis McGee. Willis McGahey. McGahey. All right, Florida. The injury at Florida when he was playing in college. In the Fiesta Bowl. Yeah. All right, that was a bad one too. Uh, number two, Alan Ray. I don't know who that is. And this is the top 10 gruesome sports injuries on askmen.com. Are you telling me that Tim Crumry didn't even make the list? Well, I, well that's number two, but we got so we got one more. But All right. Alan, Alan Ray is another NBA. No, no, uh, Alan oh, he had his... He had his eye knocked out of socket. Oh, yeah, God. That ain't good. Yeah. I was interested in All that. Right. All right, so the number one is Clint <coughs> Malert. Uh, Malert. Chuck. 
What? Oh, Malarchuk, the hockey Malarchuk. injury. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He got slashed across the throat. Yeah, and the juggler. So Ooh, that's the juggler vein. I forgot about that one. That was nasty. That was nasty. Yeah. So, who, so who, yeah, who are you saying wasn't even on that list? Tim Crumry. Uh, right here, I just I just put Tim Crumry, and the only thing that came up with was broken leg. Uh, I thought it was an in- ankle. But uh, you now there's a worst injury in Super Bowl history, Tim Crumry. How did Tim Crumry not make the list? Yeah, it was nasty. Know. Hey, what? <laughs> Are you outraged, young Mason, that Tim Crumry was left off the list? Yeah. Okay, me too. High five. All right, all right. Now go, go watch your shows. No? <laughs> he no? said no. All can't. right. All right, moving along. Also uh, off of the Facebook topics uh, from today. Let's see here. They wanted Michael wanted to talk about Kevin Ware. That awful, awful injury. Oh, ruined my weekend. Uh, Valerie Christie would like me to talk about Tubby Smith going to Texas Tech. I don't know anything about that, quite yeah, honestly. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Tubby Smith, uh, big name in college basketball. Um, okay. All right. Yeah, All right. that's all I can say. Yeah, he's been a coach at some big programs. Uh, Kentucky, I think, uh, foremost among them. Uh, let's see here. What else do you want to talk about? Oh. Oh, yeah. Question here regarding motorcycles. Yeah, now I know, Mason, you're a motorcycle enthusiast, right? You like motorcycles. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you like most about motorcycles? Riding them. Riding them? Have you ever ridden on a motorcycle? Oh, yes. It was just, it was turned off. Mm. I was just, no, it was just, I was just pretending. Oh, you were just pretending. Yeah, because you're way too small to ride a motorcycle. No. Yeah. No, when I get big, I'm getting one motorcycle. Well, here's the question that uh, is accompanying the statement, motorcycles. Yes. It says, motorcycles, does Jedi still ride? Now, I, I didn't know that Jedi was a, was a motorcycle guy. Uh, are you a motorcycle guy? Yeah, I used to have a Harley. Oh, you did? Yeah. But no, I, I, I had to <laughs> really? sell it. Yeah. yeah. You like, you like I the, had a badass Harley. It was, right. a, it was a Harley Nightster. All right. All right. Very cool. That's cool. It was 1,200cc. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, North Korea. Boy, North Korea is ratcheting oh, yeah. up here. Kevin Barber would like me to mention North Korea. Uh, you see what's happening now? All right, here's the latest. So this all started with North Korea testing their nuclear missiles or their supposed nuclear missiles or their nuclear program or whatever it is. They're doing something with nukes and we don't like it. We told them to stop. They wouldn't stop. So now, now they're mad because we're doing some drills, some, some military drills in conjunction with the South Korean army. And they don't like that either. They're saying that now they're saying that we're in a, a state of war with South Korea. They didn't say they're in a state of war with us, but they have threatened us. They're saying they're in a state of war with North Korea, which is uh, you know, a volatile part of the world and has been for about the last 60 years since, since the end of World War II. That's always been a really, well, we had a Korean war there. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> there, there are problems in that area. And the problem in that area is that North Korea is an absolutely archaic world compared to the rest of the world it is like uh well i i've said they they have those stunning google pictures of north korea from outer space at night where the whole rest of the world is lit up but north korea is so backward ass that they're completely dark the entire north korean peninsula leading right up to mainland china is completely dark and it's pretty astonishing and speaks volumes about what north korea is they're starving their people it's an absolute dictatorship although it's shielded in some form of communism which is why they're still friendly with the chinese the chinese signed a pact years ago that said if north korea ever got in trouble with the south and therefore america that china would back them there is a treaty between china and north korea that china says if you get yourself into a war we will defend you and that's the big problem that we're having as the united states of america we've got this smart ass little north korea rattling their saber, making all kinds of threats because they know they got big China beholden to them via treaty. Well, what about... All right, two, I got two things I want to kind of mention. Uh, you, you saw where China is now mobilizing a lot of troops on their border, right? Yes, the People's Liberation Army of China or the People's Republic Army, whatever it is. I think it's a PLA. Yeah. I think it's a liberation. People's Liberation Army of China is now like all massing ground forces up on the border. However... That's not necessarily a show of force because the big thing that China is afraid of is massive North Korean refugees spilling across the border should war erupt between North and South. So that's not necessarily an act of aggression on the part of the Chinese. They, they're just but looking after But it's them going, hey, they're acknowledging Calm down, shit's, everybody. You know, getting... But, you know, my thing is, 
I heard uh, somebody, an analyst this morning mention something that I found very interesting. They're saying that really the whole North Korea thing is almost like a magic act to, to get people distracted and to, to, to not pay attention to what's going on in Syria and Iran right now. Uh, like a shell game, like a giant global shell game. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's that's uh, it's a constant shell game going on. Pay attention to Africa. No, pay attention to the Middle East. Pay attention to Eastern Russia or Eastern Europe. Pay attention to the the, the far south, the Far East. I I don't know. I don't I don't really take this whole North Korean thing seriously because I lived through the Cold War. I know what this is. This is a proxy battle. This is another little squirmish between superpowers and in this case it's the the united states of america representing south korea versus the people's republic of china representing north korea american troops will never fight chinese troops but um, but south korean back troops will fight north or chinese back north korean troops i mean that's that's the proxy war that that we're all fearing now i remember the cold war we don't have a problem with china i i'm hearing all this manufactured stuff it all seems to be started from the fact that they owe or they own all of our debt. That's not even really true, right? But well, it's it's true to a certain degree. They've they've bought a lot of American dollars. The the, the problem they don't own all our debt though. Well, they own a good chunk of it. But that's good. <laughs> the guy that you owe money to doesn't want you to do anything but succeed. Otherwise, how are we going to pay them back? So this whole thing about us in China. I don't understand it. We, if we go down, China goes down. How, China is a powerful economy right now. I mean, there's a lot of people there, but they've got, they, well, they have no regulations, all right? So they have industry like up the wazoo. It's so polluted there. They have no carbon emission, nothing like that. So a lot of the world's countries or, 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 or companies are sending all their crap over to China because they've got basic slave labor and they don't have to worry about all this EPA crap and other sorts of regulations on how they can produce their materials. So they go over there and they get it and then they sell to the rest of the world. China needs the rest of the world to be good. And, and specifically the Western world, the United States, which, you know, which is why they bought all our debt because we already buy all their shit. It's basically all on credit. You understand? Yeah. So China doesn't want us to be disrupted economically. China wants us to once again be this big economic superpower and get out of our depression because then the debt that they owe is going to be worth something. Otherwise, they're left holding the bag. So, I mean, all of this posturing between North Korea and America, it's not going to go anywhere. It is not going to go anywhere, mark my words, because a war with North Korea would mean China would have to get involved and China would have to decide whether or not to honor the treaty with North Korea or completely ruin their entire economic infrastructure by waging war against the United States. It's just, it makes no sense. Now, to that end, do you know what we did this weekend? We moved one of our battleship destroyers or uh, floating missile platforms, whatever the hell we call them now. We moved uh, one of those over uh, off the coast of North Korea, just sitting there in the, in the water. Uh, hold on, look, so check it out. This so we're, is, we're in the water waving our fist. This is the story that I was thinking of. Okay. Um, U.S. has over $16 trillion in debt, yet China only ho- holds $1.1 trillion of that debt. Yeah, I, I don't know what that means. I mean, you, you can make a case. The numbers are all so complicated. One person will say, I, I, maybe that's a significant amount. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what that means. But depending on what side you're on, you can hear different facts supporting different sides. So so maybe that's right. Maybe they don't owe as much debt as certain people would like us to believe. Because, remember, we got to stay afraid, Jansen. We have to stay scared. If, if we're not scared, then we're not going to be okay with putting all the money into the defense that we're always putting in. And you know who's gonna, So who's the biggest scary guy on the block now? It's China. So someone's got to trump up some crap. This is what I hate about the fear-mongering. China is not the enemy. China needs us to be successful. Yet people will... Trump up all these ideas on why China is bad. Donald Trump hates China. Well, you listen to Donald Trump and he'll tell you. <laughs> why, why does he hate China? Oh, he thinks war with China is the only way to go. He hates China because he sees that China as an economic superpower. And I don't think Donald Trump really wants to pay back all the Chinese debt. So he'd rather just defeat them and then not have to pay them back. He's, he's, thinking, he's looking at it from his own selfish personal business interests. He doesn't like China because they're... Well, I don't know what they're doing, but they're doing business better than him. I don't know. I don't know how it works, but he, he doesn't like them. He would like them to go away, which, you know, it's Donald Trump. What, what, what can you say about that? All right. So that's what we know about uh, about uh, North Korea. 
Oh no, I didn't tell you. We sent the battleship off the coast. How yeah. cool is this? How cool is this? Do you know what we sent? <laughs> this is, I'm a big John McCain fan. I like John McCain. I think he's a badass. He's a true American hero. He might be a little wiggy on some of the more uh, modern social issues, but he's coming around. His daughter's kind of kind of bringing him around, Meghan McCain. We sent the, John, we sent the USS John McCain <laughs> battleship. Yeah. How cool is that for him? Yeah. You know? And, and is he going to be more like for aggression now that it's him out there? It's his boat. It's the boat name for him and his father. And, and it is. It's named the... In the United States Navy, there is uh, John S. McCain Sr. and there is John S. McCain Jr. The senator, the one that was held captive by the uh, by the Vietnamese, that's John McCain Jr. His father was an admiral and a very decorated and, and a very important man in the history of the United States Navy. So they didn't want to name uh, have two boats, a junior and a senior. So they just named one boat and left off the junior and the senior for both of them. Oh, nice. So it's just the John S. McCain, the USS yeah. John S. McCain. Now, is this, is this the one that's like super high tech? Yeah, yeah. So, it's got like all these like uh, missile systems yeah, and it's stuff. Like camouflage looking. It's like a stealth boat. Okay. <laughs> it's, yeah, whatever it is, it's like their their baddest. Yeah, kiddo. My son now is interrupting the show. Well, what what can I do for you? You don't want to you don't want to play anymore. <gasps> yeah, go look out the window. Go look for Miss Cat. Yeah. All right, that'll be good. All right, well, there you have it. So that's all, all we need to know about China. China and North Korea. I, I'm pretty right, sure that there's it. a lot more to know, but as far as this little opening segment goes. All right, here's what we'll do. Let's take a quick break here. We'll play another song. When we come back, I want to talk about the story that I've been most interested in. The death of Shane Gandy. Are you following this? Is this the prosecutor? Nah, this is uh -huh. the kid from, well, yeah, we'll get into the Texas prosecutors yeah, dropping like flies too. as well. That's a little dark, though. Uh, Shane Gandy is the uh, star of MTV's Buck Wild, who, uh, he ended up dying. Have you seen Buck Wild yet? I can't imagine uh, that you have. Uh, I have. I've seen about, I've seen almost the entire season because it's like a train wreck. I can't, I can't not watch. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Plus a whole bunch more. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. HireAHero.org presents PMS, the Pugs Moran Show for a Tuesday afternoon live at DeepLMOnAir.com.
Deep on, on air. air. On air. On air. <laughs> Presents PMS, the Pugs Moran Show on DeepLMOnAir.com for a Tuesday afternoon here alongside Jedi Jansen in a rainy day here in beautiful Highland Park, Texas. The temporary homes of Deep Ellum on Air Studios. Beautiful. I love today. I love days like today. Me too. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the problem is though. I love days like today when I didn't have a three-year-old. When you got a three-year-old in a day like today and you got them all day, it sucks. You better start figuring out how to finger pain or some crap like that, because they go stir crazy. Although, he's he's doing all right. Now that your girlfriend's here, <laughs> yeah. he's watching her hang out. All right, uh, we were going through a couple of things uh, off the Facebook page, the way we like to get the show started every day, a bunch of topics that you guys want to hear about. We'll get those away right away before I delve into my more eh, boring stuff that I'll force down your throats. Brady Morris, though, uh, I wanted to get into this. I was going to talk about this later. We may as well address it now since he posted it up on the Facebook page, John Pugs. Brady Morris says, I was wondering what, if any, take you have on Game of Thrones setting records for illegal downloads right after the premiere. <laughs> yeah, you texted me this <clears throat> earlier. Yeah, it was a pretty big story. Uh, what do I think? What I was wondering? I, I don't know. I mean, I watch it on HBO. When a show is that good and it is on a pay cable channel... You better believe that people are going to figure out ways to get it without paying HBO 10 bucks a month or whatever the hell it is. Although, if you like good TV, uh, I would say that it's probably worth the 10 bucks a month for HBO just to get those episodes. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's great, Brady. And uh, coming here to Deep Ellum on air, we're trying to figure out a way to record it this week, is going to be a weekly Game of Thrones uh, show, podcast, Radio Free West Eros, a throne cast, live from DeepElumOnAir.com. We almost did it last night, almost. Yeah. But we just didn't have all. It was everybody was burnt out from the weekend, and and nobody. I mean, uh, uh, you, you did a lot of board hopping hours here over the weekend, Man, Jansen. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you. Saturday night, I felt like like I had been in a microwave. Like being around all these electronics, literally from the morning <laughs> to <the> night. <laughs> I felt it electrified weird. your soul. Like, it really was a weird feeling, man. Yeah. Uh, all right, how about this one here? Uh, this is the story that I wanted to get at. This I'm fascinated by this. Because 
I don't know. I think I'm endlessly curious about how easily and how shamelessly we're all such hypocrites about stuff. So MTV uh, lost Jersey Shore. They decided not to renew it. Good. Which, by the way, you know what the problem with Jersey Shore was? You know, Jersey Shore could run for 30 years. The problem with Jersey Shore is, is that they made these knuckleheads famous. And once the, the original Jersey Shore knuckleheads got fame, they started, they started to be a problem, a handful. And MTV didn't want to deal with them anymore because, after all, they're just a bunch of skeeves. <laughs> they're just a bunch of real, you know what I mean? A bunch of juice heads and skanks. Uh, MTV doesn't need to be held hostage by these people who have nothing but for MTV. I mean, it's the whole reason that they are who they are. Is because what MTV should have done with Jersey Shore, I don't know why they did this. They did it, you know why they did it? They did it for the short end money. They saw short end money in the, in, in, in like the, 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 the first year or so, and they didn't look at the long-term prosperity of the franchise, the franchise being Jersey Shore. They should have gotten a new cast every year. Should have been a new bunch of people. Like the real world. Dude, the real world is still on the air. You know why? Because every year it's low budget because they're not paying big stuff. You know, they're not paying nobodies who, who became stars on an MTV created reality show. See, that's the formula. I didn't know it was still on. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. The real world MTV has been on for like 30 years now or something. I mean, it's been on forever. I remember it when I was a kid watching MTV. But yeah, they made stars out of the Jersey Shore cast. They couldn't handle them anymore, so they just went, you know what, forget it, we're done with it. And you know what, we're going to do it again, except how do we how do we hit the same demo as Jersey Shore, but do it completely differently? Well, they went from big city goombas and skanks to hillbilly kids. <laughs> and they created a show in West Virginia called Buckwild. And it was the exact... Have you ever been to West Virginia? <sighs> I've been to Virginia... So I don't think I need to go to West Virginia. Man, but it, <laughs> it really is like country. Yeah. I mean, it is incredible. I've been through Appalachia, but I've been through like the, the, the Pennsylvania, outside Pittsburgh, heading through into Virginia. I've been that part of Appalachia, and it was pretty scary. And that's like the, that's like the more mainstream, normal parts of Appalachia. You get deep into the West Virginia part. Holy it's cow. where you get the term hillbilly from. Yes. Like, seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have people, different clans that occupy different hills warring with one another. So um, they go down MTV and they cast these white trash. <laughs> and I'm being delicate, but they, you know, they, they describe themselves as white trash. Just as the Jersey Shore go, hey, I'm a Goomba. Yeah, I'm a Juice. They take these negative <laughs> nicknames and they own them. <laughs> and suddenly they aren't negative anymore. So one of the kids in particular... On this show. His name was uh, Shane Gandy. Okay? Now, he was the one that stuck out. He would be the hillbilly situation. He, he was like the guy. He's the guy that I remember. I watched five or six episodes of this show. And by the way, full disclosure, I watched every episode of Jersey Shore. I saw every episode of it. I, I just, part of pop culture. You know, something people were talking about, so I figured I may as well know about it. And, and I enjoyed the train wreck aspects of it, but I, I'm not sad to see it go. So when Buck Wild premiered, I tuned in and I checked it out. And this Shane, this Shane Gandy dude, he stuck out to me. How? What does he do? He stuck out to me because he was the biggest idiot of a bunch of idiots that were on this show. <laughs> he was like the total, like, they were all idiots. They're all like total like West Virginia, hey, let's go swing from a tire over a holler. But hey, what do you say we light the tire over on fire? What? I don't know. The way they <laughs> talk a holler, I have no idea. But they were, okay, so well, the first thing that I remember this Shane guy doing was he wanted to make a swimming pool. But, of course, you know, they didn't have money to buy a swimming pool. So he went down and he got somebody's truck, like a big, giant, industrial dump truck, okay? And he lined it with plastic, and then he filled the back of the dump truck up with water. <laughs> And they backed the dump truck up to the house, and they all used the roof of their house in the holler to, like, swim in this truck that was turned into a swimming pool. Oh and this Shane dude was the first guy who went off. And, he, and I'm like, he's going to crack his head on the side of this. You know, this is ridiculous. This, there's no, this is, like, the most unsafe thing. He's climbed up to the top of his house, and now he's going to jump off his house into the back of a dump truck that's filled with water. Oh. I'm like, there's no way he's going to make it. And so he does, he does it again, and now everybody's swimming. Everybody's out. He... They just do idiotic stuff. Like, for instance, if you look at the promo, just go to YouTube and, and look for a trailer, MTV's Buckwild. You will see these kids off-roading. 
Okay, there's like five kids in the back of a pickup truck. None of them are have seatbelts on, nothing. And then there's a bunch of hillbillies driving this through, you know, off-road conditions. And they're mudding and they're all laughing. And I'm thinking, MTV is filming this crap. You know, we just had a professional football player a couple of seasons ago fall out of the back of a pickup truck and die. Chris Henry. And it wasn't even off-roading. It was on a street. So MTV is now filming a bunch of teenagers doing this. Oh, is this the promo for Buckwild? All right, let's listen to this. That means the freedom to do whatever the f we want. Well, that guy who just said hell to ride, yeah, he's dead now. That guy's dead now. That guy who just gave that little speech. Is whatever happens, happens. That guy, the phone, laughing maniacally, Facebook, is dead. None of that internet stuff. This, My parents yeah. knew yep. everything. This is all if about it. For them, I wouldn't be here. Who do you know gets out here and loves to swing track? This cat right here. Hi guys. What's going on with you, Tyler? Tyler spent the past three nights with me. You guys in my bed. How disrespectful is that? Sorry. I think Tyler is a little bit of a man whore. I don't give a shit about care things. I'm a domain. Yeah, they don't give a shit what anybody thinks about anything. It's just a half hour collection every week of teenagers uh, making bad decisions. 14 hot wings. Alright, see all this crazy shit they're doing? Yeah, well, one of them died doing crazy shit over the weekend. You're listening to what everybody's buzzing in your ear. You can get your f***ing kick rocks for all I care. I should do something reckless. This is yeah. the best birthday licking I've ever had. Are there cops outside? Close Bring your party down. You're insane. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. We all grew up here together. We're just like family. Oh, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> People say we've got big personalities, but we've got even bigger hearts. <laughs> that was Shane, who gave her the bouquet. Ah, that pickup truck. Yeah, that, that's now known as the Death Mobile after this weekend. All right, so you can see what MTV was going for. MTV was exploiting the reckless activities of a bunch of kids who don't know better. Right? Yeah, it's almost like <clears throat> it's like jackass meets real world meets uh It is the jackass Jersey meets Shore. Jersey Shore meets yeah. the real world. Yeah, with with the lowest common denominator of people. I mean, they were really just despicable people. Now, I'm I'm reading all of these glowing oh, they just know how to be country. They're just good people. No, they're not. No, they're not. Like, half of them didn't even graduate from high school. None of them are going away to college. None of them have any plans of contributing anything to this world other than staying in their holler. Well, actually, the good news is, is that we have this uh, Darwin theory. You know, the thinning of the herd. <laughs> A lot of these knuckleheads won't be around. MTV should get their ass sued off. Here's the problem. All right, I'm going to give you the story, okay? Sheriff's office confirms identity of all three victims found in vehicle. Ooh, three. Three. Oh, his uncle, who, who I believe was also featured on the show, is also dead. And then another guy. Now, was this being filmed? That is what everybody's wondering now, because uh. they are in season. They are filming stuff. Saturday night at around 3 a.m. at the local bar, Shane, Shane Gandy, was heard proclaiming to everyone that he's going mudding. He's going extreme mudding. Reports were that he was extremely intoxicated. So his uncle went, hell yeah, it's 3 a.m., we're drunk, let's go mudding in the dark. So, and another guy, Uncle Shane and another guy decided they're going to go mudding. That was the last anybody heard of them until Monday morning. They all went looking for nobody heard nothing. They didn't come home on Easter. Early Monday morning, one of their friends who was out looking on the mud paths where they were known to have gone mudding, found their truck, their pickup truck, completely submerged, not completely, I'm sorry, halfway submerged in mud in the middle of this like giant puddle all three were inside dead now here's what they think happened and, and this is thinning of the herd man this is how dumb people die what they think happened was they'd gone off the road in the dark and fallen into this extremely large swamp area they attempted, uh, they believe, to get out because it was a mudder truck. They thought they could get out. The muffler, tailpipe, everything was completely in the mud. 
basically backing all the carbon monoxide back up into the car. Uh. So what they believe happened was these idiots stayed in the car, gunning it. Uh. You know, the cabin completely filled up with the carbon monoxide because the tailpipe was blowing right back into the car. And at some point, don't they go, oh, it's too cold, let's get out. No, they just all sat there and died. They just all sat there and died. Are you kidding me? So now, surely they weren't filming then. Well, Well, because a a cameraman would have a little more sense to be like, uh, guys, what's going on here? We don't know anything, though. I mean, yesterday it was they were found in a car. No more... No more details. This morning, it was the car was submerged in mud, and they think it might be carbon monoxide. I mean, the details surrounding this, and they are filming currently. Now, was that being filmed for an episode of Buckwild? I don't know. But certainly, Shane was in his TV star mode. He was looking to do some outrageous stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna say no. They weren't filming at, at that. Then, which boy, is if they which, were, which just <laughs> makes you were. like, if they were, then uh, it'd almost be you know, they an were, excuse. Someone, someone would have to help them, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a cameraman that sees that the entire vehicle is now filled with exhaust smoke. And, and look, all right, here is why I don't feel bad about this, because this wouldn't have happened to me. For a couple of reasons, okay? Bad decisions were made all around. And I can't have sympathy for someone who has a, a storied history of making bad decisions. I have watched this kid over the season of Buckwild do some of the most crazy ass shit. And I've always thought, this kid's going to die. Well, guess what? He's dead. And I'm saying this about Lindsay Lohan, too. We're all, we're all oh, isn't it funny watching her go down in flames? No, she's going to die. And when she dies, I don't want to hear all you people going, oh, isn't it sad? Lindsay Lohan died. No. We see what's happening with her. Someone could help her, but nobody is. And with this kid, MTV just happily filmed and encouraged all of these insane hijinks that this group of kids in West Virginia were doing to the point now where he did something so stupid, so over the top, that he's dead and two other people are dead with him. MTV is responsible. MTV, surely if they are not directly responsible for this, MTV encouraged it and made this kid a star and made the crazy, stupid, bad decisions that this kid always made somehow lucrative for him. He became a TV star off of it. It's sad, you know? I mean, it's crazy. This is just a kid. He's a 21-year-old stupid kid. And again, I don't feel bad because this would have never happened to me. It would never have happened to me or anybody that I choose to spend time with. One, I can tell you flat out at 3 a.m. if I'm at a bar and somebody goes, let's go mudding. I'm saying, have fun. I am not going mudding after drinking at a bar <laughs> at 3 a.m. I may not even go mudding at noon on a Sunday afternoon. I, you know, I, I don't, pff, it's not something I'm into, but let's just say for a fact, I would not have been in that vehicle at 3 a.m. going mudding. Two, the minute the carbon dioxide started to spill back into the car. I'd have been, guys, this isn't safe because, see, I know how this stuff works. We're all about to asphyxiate ourselves and then never <laughs> wake up. So I'm going to get out. I'm going to walk through the waist-deep mud, and I'm going to head on back to the holler or wherever the hell it is that we're camping tonight. You knuckleheads, you figure out how to get out. Come on, right? Yeah. I, I, I think they were so drunk that, you know, they were stuck for a couple of minutes, and some of them might have gone to sleep just because they were drunk. All right, man, maybe we just sleep here. They're crazy hillbillies. I could totally see them stuck in mud sleeping it off. Waking up in the morning, right? Couldn't you see that? Yeah. I bet you that's what they did. The dumbasses died because they probably didn't shut the truck off. (laughs) And it just, all the exhaust came in and killed them. I can't, this, right? This is what those Darwin Awards every year is about. People who kill themselves in the most ridiculous ways. I mean, my thing is, why would you go do this if you don't have a cameraman filming you? Like, why are you doing this? This is, like, really what they did. It's what and they did. It's what they did. I told you, their entire life is nothing but bad decisions. Nothing but bad decisions. You can even hear it in the trailer. I'm going to do what I want whenever I want. When a 19-year-old says that, you know that there is some shit coming. Because that is, a 19-year-old doing whatever they want, whenever they want, is going to mean some bad decisions are going to be made and some consequences are going to have to be dealt with. The whole show was about that. How crazy can these kids get and let's film it? It's a train wreck. Nobody, I can't, well, actually, you know what I used to say about Jersey Shore? I used to say nobody watches this show because they want to be like that. I was wrong. 
Yeah. I was wrong. In the beginning, Jersey Shore was a joke. They were such characters of douchebags and sleaze bucks that, you know, you didn't even, you, there was no way anyone could like them. And then over the course of a couple of years, people actually started thinking they were celebrities and wanting to be like the Dressing situation. Dressing like them, I the whole know. hair. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. And now Snooki has a bona fide career. Snooki. She's ma Snooki has made more money in the last three years. It doesn't matter if she's forgotten about 12 months from now. She has made enough money in the last couple of years that she is set for life. Millions and millions of dollars in Snooki's bank account. Snooki. That sucks, man. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. We used to make people rich and famous when they had some kind of talent to offer. That doesn't happen anymore. All you got to do is be willing to do something stupid on TV, and maybe somebody will pay you handsomely to do it. Speaking of reality shows, and we are in the dark ages of reality shows now. Last week I told you about the... Uh, cast member of the French Survivor series who died mm -hmm. during the film and I said oh boy here we go now we got mainstream network TV series people dying in these reality challenges because they're absolutely ridiculous well um, there was another person on that French reality series of Survivor and that person was a doctor and after the contestant died during a tug of war challenge from a massive heart attack the doctor was absolutely pummeled online by fans <laughs> Why didn't the doctor do more? Why couldn't the doctor have saved his life? Isn't that why you have a doctor on the show for these kinds of situations? Well, this morning the doctor killed himself. So, you know, now oh, that, now that no. Survivor Series has two corpses. The guy who died of a heart attack during a challenge, and then the guy who was so criticized by fans of the show online that he didn't help the guy when he had a heart attack, that guy, a doctor, killed himself because he felt he... How ridiculous. What, what is happening with reality TV? What the hell is happening? God. And now, of course, uh, Shane. All right, let me, let me give you the story on the Shane, okay, just so we have the details. The Kiwanaha County Sheriff's Office has now identified all three people, including Buckwild cast member Shane Gandy, who were found dead in a vehicle in Sissonville. The bodies of Gandy, 21, his uncle David, 48, and Donald Robert Myers, 27, all from Sissonville, were discovered inside a Ford Bronco located. You know, that's something that happens in like small hillbilly areas where like it's real rural. You'll get like a group of three guys hanging out together and one will be 48 and one will be 19. <laughs> one will be, you know, because it's yeah. such a small town that people who do nothing but hang out in bars and get into trouble, they will all gravitate to each other regardless of what their age is. Wait, why is a 19 year old hanging out at a bar though? Because it's Sissonville. You know, so. who knows? You really think they card hard at the, uh, at the Sissonville tavern <laughs> i mean i imagine uh they were at dude's birthday party so they knew exactly how old he was the vehicles and bodies were found in one of shane gandy's uh the vehicles and bodies were found by one of shane gandy's friends who was searching the trails and ridges in the area for him and the others the vehicle sat evenly but upright and was partially submerged in deep mud mud was covering the lower part of the passenger side door of the vehicle but the driver's side vehicle was above the mud the driver could have just gotten out. <laughs> he could have just gotten out. He didn't have to die of carbon monoxide poisoning. But I bet he knew he could get it out of that mud hole. I bet you that was it. You know, rocking it back and forth. And yeah. I mean, there was a lot of carbon monoxide. Think about that. Think about how much you rev that engine, rocking it back and forth, spinning those wheels, trying to get out of that mud. Dummies. A uh, deputy said the Bronco was found next to a ridge top trail, and the section of the trail was passable by four wheel vehicles only. But the Bronco was in a mud pit next to the trail. That's where they believe it fell into the mud pit. The Bronco was in a mud pit next to the trail. The area is accessible by following the wooded trail for about one mile from Shane Gandy's residence near Faxton Hollow. See? Hollow. Uh, Shane Gandy's body was in the driver's seat. Yeah, well, he was the idiot that refused to get out. The Bronco was removed from the mud by a bulldozer. Uh, the bodies were removed from the vehicle and have been taken to the state medical examiner's office. Autopsies will be performed. Uh, but it's looking like carbon monoxide poisoning. No foul play is suggested. So that means, you know, there were no bullet holes, no, no nothing. <coughs> <coughs> so there you have it. Trouble in the world of uh, reality TV. You know, so I'm, I'm trying to look up how long it actually takes to die of carbon monoxide poison. And as far as I, I haven't been able to find an actual number, but it's 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 looking like it's, it takes a long time. I bet they were drunk. I bet you the two guys, when they got stuck in the mud, probably went, all right, man, we're just going to lay here. And they closed their eyes, leaned back in the seat, and went to sleep. And Shane driving it probably... <laughs> 
rocking it back and forth until he was overcome. The other two guys probably already went to sleep. They were really drunk. At least that's what the reports from the bar are, that they were really drunk. And I'm sure this isn't the first time they've gone mudding at night when really drunk. But it just shows that it is actually dangerous. It doesn't just look dangerous. It isn't just thrilling because everything's going to be okay. No, something bad could really happen when you're acting like an idiot with a motorized vehicle r- riding off the road. All right, so I got, I got a list on, of, of symptoms and how long it takes. So when you have exposure uh, for, for two, three hours, you get a slight headache, uh, loss of judgment. And then um, unconscious after yeah after after about three I, hours is is about how long it takes. Well, yeah, it's it's not something that's easy. These guys gave up. These guys didn't know about carbon monoxide poisoning. They gave up and went to sleep. They didn't know because they're not smart enough. Because we celebrate stupidity, and now we have some people who probably had no idea that the carbon monoxide was going to kill them. So they said, well, you keep trying. And they went, oh, we'll roll the window down. Well, (laughs) you can roll the window down, but all the carbon monoxide's coming straight into the car. So it's got to go through you before it goes out the window. You know? (laughs) I mean, what's the point of that? That's probably what they thought. Dummies. See, look, a normal person knows that there's a carbon monoxide leak because they get a headache and they start to feel drowsy. Yeah. And I mean, that's what happens. So, all right, well, here, let's take a break. We'll take a quick break. We'll play a little song. We'll come back. We'll do one more segment. And I I know we got to get out of here, right? We got to do a little bit of early thing. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about what's happening with prosecutors in this country. You you ready for that one? Yep. What's happening in this state Uh, is what happened on Saturday in Kaufman County related to what happened up there in Colorado just last month. We know it's related to what happened uh, on the 31st. Of January this year when an assistant prosecutor was gunned down in a parking lot. All right. Yeah, it looks like war has been declared on prosecutors in the state of Texas and possibly in the country. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. I stepped all over the song. Enjoy it. It's PMS on DeepElmontAir.com. Pulling the roots up, scratching the surface, but digging through stumps just won't work.
Going slow, Black Veil on PMS. HireHero.org presents PMS on DeepElementOnAir.com. All right, uh, the big story that's going around, well, these here parts and parts unknown, basically uh, coast to coast, the big story is the killing that occurred over the weekend um, in Kaufman County. Now, I'm just going to read you the story so we can all get up to speed on it, and then we'll have a little conversation about what this means. Headline, oh, wait, this is, uh, where is this? CBS News, pull this one out of uh, somewhere. Uh, Dateline, authorities investigating shooting deaths of Kaufman... Shit, Authorities investigating shooting deaths of Kaufman County District Attorney Mike McClelland and his wife, Cynthia. An intense investigation is underway in Texas where Kaufman County District Attorney Mike McClelland and his wife were found shot to death Saturday, just two months after one of McClelland's prosecutors was shot and killed near his courthouse. Two months later. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the guy's assistant is gunned down brutally. And you know what the worst part is? When his assistant was gunned down two months ago, Mike McClellan himself was the guy that was on all the TV channels. All the, He was on CNN, and in the press conference, he said, make no mistake, we will get you. We know who you are. We will get you. Well, they got him. Man. They got him before he could get them. I mean, this is brazen. This is the kind of crap that happens in Central America. This is the kind of stuff that happens, you know, in South America where they kill judges. This is not something that has ever really occurred in America. We don't kill judges in America. We don't shoot prosecutors in America. It's a huge deal when you shoot a police officer or when you injure or harm a police officer. We have never had this problem. This is a problem of third world countries. This is the kind of thing that happens in Central America, the kind of thing that happens in South America, not in the United States. Well, it happens now. District Attorney's Office will be closed Monday and security will be tight for other government workers in Kaufman County, Texas in the wake of killings. The courthouse will be open, but officials are promising visibly tighter security. Multiple ages include agencies, including the Texas Rangers and the FBI, are now beginning their search to hunt down the killers. I, I love that here in Texas we have Texas Rangers. Yeah, isn't that cool? It's cool. It's like our own like state version of like the X-Men. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, sure, we've got our Texas FBI. Sure, we've got our state police. Sure, we've got our municipal uh, police departments and uh, all those other kinds of things. But we've got something extra. We've got X-Men. We've got Texas Rangers with superpowers. The Texas Rangers Hall of Fame is right outside Waco. And every time I drive to Austin to, to pick up my kid, I always want to stop in at the Texas Rangers Hall of Fame. Because I really don't know anything about the Texas Rangers. Really? Well, I mean, I know, I know what their history was in the Old West. And, you know, how they would track down outlaws, wanted dead or alive, and all that kind of stuff. But that role has sort of been taken over by the Federal Marshal Service. That's what the Federal Marshal Service does now. So, I mean, what is the modern incarnation of the Texas Rangers? What do they do? I don't know. All right, at any rate, they're on the case. If I know anything about the Texas Rangers, they will solve this case. Investigators swarm the Forney, Texas home of 63-year-old McClellan and his 65-year-old wife, Cynthia. Here's the other thing, too, that is just, it's been for about, for the, in the past, this does not occur. They not only killed a prosecutor, but they killed his wife. Wives and families are always off limits. See, if this was the mob, the wife would have been spared. The wife would have been tied up and left. But she, she wouldn't have been killed. The mob has rules about killing family members. I'm glad you bring that up, though, because, uh, I mean, this stuff did happen back in the day, though, right? You know, killing judges. Well, well, well what is the day? 1965 or 1865? I mean, what are we talking about? I mean, I don't know. You tell me. Well, yeah. Like, didn't this happen? Didn't the mob no. do this kind of stuff? No, no. The mob, mob never. Well, okay, wait. Now I got to go back because certainly there were instances. Um, for the most part, the, the, the mob, as we know it in America, whether it was the Chicago outfit or the five families of New York, which were the two big governing bodies that ran everything else, they always had rules about this. They, they didn't kill cops. They didn't kill judges. They paid off judges. They didn't have to kill judges because the judges were all on the take. But no, this is, this is the domain of the... Eastern European hit squads or the, the South African cartel or South American cartels. That's what that's who does this kind of stuff. In America, we've always been, even at our most barbaric, we've been at least civilized to the point where we don't kill prosecutors, judges, and we certainly don't kill family members of targets. That that is just unthinkable in the world of organized crime or in the world of hey, what's going on, buddy? You have something to say you want to say about uh, organized crime? 
Yeah. What do you want to say? You just say it. I would talk. Oh, you just want to? Okay. All right. That's fine. Uh, let's see here. Official uh, Coffin County District Attorney Mike McClellan and his wife Cynthia were targeted in the killing. Um, sources tell CBS News an unknown killer or killers used an assault rifle to commit the murders as early as Friday night. Bodies were found Saturday evening. Coffin County Sheriff David Burns loved his work in the talking heads. Had little to say, yeah. but uh, this is what the sheriff had to say. It's unnerving for the law enforcement community. It's unnerving to the community at large. Uh, the murders come just two months after another Coffin County prosecutor, Assistant District Attorney Mark Haas, was gunned down in a parking lot just a block from the courthouse where he worked. That same day, M- Mike McClellan himself stood firm at a news conference after his, his prosecutor was murdered, sending an impassioned warning to those who killed Mark Haas, quoting, We're very confident that we're going to find you. We're going to pull you out of the hole you're in. We're going to bring you back and let the people of Kaufman County prosecute, prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law, he said then. And they killed him for it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, this is crazy. This they- is... Didn't they say that uh, he was, you know, always carrying a piece around? Too? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was a concealed carry guy, but they got him in his house. You know, I mean, he was in his pajamas when they got him. So I don't think he sleeps with a gun. I don't think he's that crazy. But yes, yeah, since the killing of the assistant in Kaufman County, all of the other county officials have taken to wearing guns, and they probably thought it was overkill until Saturday night. Now I'll tell you what: if I am a prosecutor in the Kaufman County's office. Whoa, you better have, and I'm sure that they do, are armed protection. You know, cops stationed outside of their houses. Yes, Mason, what is, what is going on? You can't wear a gun. You can't wear a gun? No, that's right, because guns, guns do what? Bang, right. Let the record show that he made a gun figure yeah. with his hand and then shot me. Um, all right, so this is a big story, and, and, and what... There are, there are two, depending on the sources, there are two leading candidates here. And one is, it's a white supremacist thing. The Texas, oh no, the Aryan Nation, or Aryan Brotherhood, ABT, the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas, they think is behind it. Or they think it could be Mexican drug cartel guys. There is a whole wing of news on this that only focuses on the Mexican drug cartel aspects. And then there is another whole wing of this that other people are covering it, simply trying to attach it to the white supremacists. Now, see, I haven't heard anything about the Mexican drug cartel. Um, I'm, you're not hearing as much. Today I'm hearing more about that than I did yesterday. Yesterday was all about the white supremacist co- uh, connection. They, they think that... There was a reason. If you remember a month ago when the Colorado prisons chief was gunned down in his home in Colorado, Monument, Colorado, I believe is, is where he was shot. The guy who did that was killed by Texas police in North Texas, just outside Denton. He was racing back into Texas. Why was the assassin who killed a Colorado public official on his way back to Texas? Now connect the dots. A month ago, totally unrelated, a month before that, we had a Kaufman County assistant prosecutor shot. Well, now maybe those are connected. And then on Saturday, we had another Kaufman County prosecutor shot, all in very similar ways. I mean, all ambush style. Two of the three were in their homes when they answered the front door. So there's people thinking that there is now a network of white supremacists in the state of Texas who are looking to kill prosecutors and specifically targeting the Kaufman County prosecutors because on the day, January 31st, that the uh, assistant prosecutor in Kaufman County was gunned down in the parking lot out in front of the court. On that day, they had indicted 30 members of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. So they think that killing was directly related to that. And now the Colorado guy, that was an Aryan Nation guy. And now this third guy, McClellan, is this related? Is this all Aryan Nation? I mean, I thought we had the whole white supremacy thing handled. I know. I, I thought, Why is this know, still an issue? We had skinheads back in the 90s. You know, I, I thought they all went away. I thought they all grew up and, you know, yeah. this is still a problem. But this Aryan Brotherhood of Texas is bad news. They're, they're in war right now. The Aryan Brotherhood of Texas is in a war with the Aryan Brotherhood, or so I hear. This is what they were reporting. Why can't we just get along? Yeah, even even the white supremacists can't get along. It sucks. Well, I think that that doesn't bode well for us as a species if even the most uh, opinionated, so I, now, I don't like-minded understand of us why, can't get along. Why two groups of white 
supremacy are mm. fighting each other. Like, what Oh, this is good. Oh, you're going to love this. Why are they fighting? Good question. Well, the Aryan Brotherhood was a prison gang that started in California. Uh, they were all white supremacists, and they grew to be very powerful, and as they got out, they started to form outside of prison walls. And the Aryan Brotherhood was, uh, you know, the prime, uh, it's the major leagues of, uh, if you're a white supremacist, if you hate black people in America, the Aryan Brotherhood is the major leagues. If you're in that group, you've made it. You're the Derek Jeter of racists. You've, you've got to that group. Well, in Texas, the white supremacist prison gangs, they wanted an affiliation. They said, hey, man, we love what you're doing out there in California. Can we join the Aryan Brotherhood? And we'll just be like a Texas chapter. And the California guy said, no, that's our name. We thought of it. You can't have it. <laughs> you know, it's like, it was like something childish. Wow. I'm certain it was something childish. So what happened was Texas then said, oh, really? You won't let us use your name? Well, we're just going to use it anyway. And we're going to call it the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. And so now California is all mad. So that's what's going on between those two. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> right? People are going to be killed over Copyright a name. Issues. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm sure people have already been killed. I'm sure people have been shanked. I'm sure that a Texas white supremacist has found himself in a California prison over the last couple of years since this beef has been brewing and has probably paid dearly for an argument over a copyright <laughs> on a name. Hey, you ever watched The Devil's Ride? Have you ever seen this show? No. Devil's Ride is a, a, a reality series. They'll, they'll have us believe that it's an, an actual reality series, but you're not fooling me. I mean, I swear to God, I've seen half these people in TV shows. They're all like, I swear to God. There's like a couple of guys. I'm like, that dude's an actor. I've seen that guy. You know, it's... Yeah. But it's about this uh, band, uh, this band of uh, motorcycle guys, and they have a gang in San Diego. And uh, they split. The, uh, one of the leaders left and formed a rival gang. And when he formed his rival gang, uh, I think it's called the Laughing Devils. Yeah, Laughing Devils is the gang. And then one of the dudes left the Laughing Get Devils and formed his new gang, the Sinister Mob, the Sin Mob. But they're now at war with each other because he chose the same colors. He chose black and red. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. And so for the last like season and a half, it started last year and now it's been this whole season. These two guys, it's all every every day it's like, take your jacket off. No, I'm not gonna take it off. You don't own these colors. Those are our colors. Yeah, it's just, like so stupid. It's so <laughs> stupid. It's childish. I don't know what to make of it. All right, uh, let's see here. Is there anything on TV tonight? Let's do a watch list before we get out of here for the day. Uh, is Justified on tonight? I think it might be. It might be the season finale, but I'm not exactly sure because I probably won't get to watch it because of my kid. Game of Thrones, are you all caught up on Game of Thrones? You know, uh, I'm That's not. That's playing on one of the HBOs tonight, season three premiere. I'm watching, uh, I, I started doing season one again yesterday. Just I started all right. it all over again. All right. You started all over yeah, again? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I did, though, because right. I missed a lot of stuff. Man, man, I got through the first two seasons in about two weeks. So you can do it. If you if you chunk out, don't be, don't be discouraged. Each episode is about 45 minutes. Even though it says it's 60 minutes, it's actually only about 45 minutes. So it's not as long anyway. necessarily as it seems to be. All right, I think that's going to do it. Uh... Let's see. We'll be back tomorrow. Oh, I should let you know, all this week we're going to be starting the show at 2 o'clock uh, as opposed to noon uh, simply because I have my son this week and it's just easier with his schedule and his nap time and all that stuff for me to not be doing the show at noon. And, well, that's uh, the beauty of what we're doing. You can, uh, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, we're doing it ourselves. Uh, we'll make sure this gets posted up if you missed any of it. We'll post up the YouTube feed of this show up to uh, my Facebook page and also Deep Ellum On Air's Facebook page. And uh, that's it. We'll be back tomorrow with more PMS. The Pugs Moran Show. HireAHero.org presents The Pugs Moran Show on DeepLMonAir.com. <laughs>